Next one is remember secondary effects. Secondary effects can be killers. That's when you change incentives and it causes people to change their behavior in ways that you didn't predict, like the kids wanting to, to uh, sharpen the pencils. Uh, one good example that you probably have heard of before is when we have federal flood insurance, what does it cause us to happen? People buy their storylines. Yeah. Floodplain, yeah. You get more people living in flood-prone areas when you subsidize them to live there. Duh. But that isn't the intent of the policy. It's not like the policy was passed to get people to live there. We wanted to help people who live there. But at the same token, what we end up doing is encouraging a behavior of more people living at the beach, more people living in flood zones, because we'll rebuild when they when help them rebuild. We lower the cost of it. And that's a good example of secondary effects. Um, there was one that was pretty famous uh, in Congress where they were trying to uh, mandate uh, that on airplanes you can usually hold a lap-held infant, mandate that you buy a second seat for the infant. Um, and a Harvard uh, risk scientist ended up testifying on that one and got it defeated. Um, you know, it looks like it was save babies' lives, but in fact, what he, you know, he basically ran the math. It's like you're doubling the cost of a parent flying with the child, so it'll be more likely to drive. And if you do the math on what your odds of dying in a car are versus a plane, he did all the math calculations. You're going to kill a lot more babies on the road than you're going to save in the air by passing this law. I mean, a lap-held infant is much safer in a plane than that same baby is in a car going down the street, right, because of the differential risks. So there's a lot of good examples of that in, in uh, the book. Mm -hmm.